Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. As announced in the first part of the power meter series, I have to measure altitude differences to calculate one part of the power needed to move my bike. In one of my last videos, I did some quite promising tests with a new BME 280 pressure sensor chip. As a next step, I milled a first PCB to reduce the number of wires in the box. The PCB contains sockets for the Maple Mini, a GPS module and a BME 280 pressure sensor. It also contains a 4093 Schmidt trigger, which will be explained in a later video, and several connectors to connect an OLED display, a power supply module and a button to start the ride. The whole thing is powered by a 3.7V LiPo battery. Unfortunately, the power regulators I had in my drawer had a too high dropout voltage. This means they were not able to output 3.3V with an input voltage of 3.7V. So I used a step up converter to 5V, which I connected to the V battery pin of the Maple Mini. The internal voltage regulator of the Maple reduces the 5V to the 3.3V. This is not very efficient, but it works for the moment. The PCB and the other components are put in a 3D printed case. And this case is mounted with a also 3D printed mount to the handlebar of the bike. By the way, the small ventilator is an anemometer to measure true wind speed. It is already here to be used in the next part. In a first version, the mount was not reliable and the anemometer was mounted separately. I had to replace the mount and decided to mount the anemometer directly on the box. Today, I was ready to do an extended test drive through the Swiss mountains with lots of steep slopes. The prototype worked fine, but as usual I found some areas which have to be improved. As announced in the video about measuring altitude, I wanted to compare the altitude measurements of the pressure sensor and the GPS module for its usability to measure small differences in altitude. After a few kilometers drive, it was clear that the altitude signal of the GPS was not stable enough to provide consistent readings. On flat sections, it showed varying power readings of plus to minus 200 watts, which is useless for my purposes. The same applied in quite steep slopes where it showed from time to time negative power. And my sweat showed that I definitely had to input a lot of positive power. Today I used a NEO 6 GPS chip and a newer NEO 8 chip is in the mail. As soon as it arrives, I will compare the two and will show it in a later video. A second fact was also clear after the first meters. The OLED display is readable if no sun shines on it. With sun, nothing is visible. I have to print some sort of coverage to solve this problem. In this version of the software, I refresh the display every 0.5 seconds. I found out that this is too fast. I will reduce it to one second. I think the reading will also be more stable with this measure. I compared the altitude measurements of the GPS and the pressure sensor at the top of a hill. Both showed similar results. So the formula used in the pressure sensor seems to be ok. I discovered also that my prototype emits some high frequency radiation. The wireless bike computer stopped working as soon as I switched my new power meter on. 
As a summary, I can say that I found this first test encouraging. I can now measure speed and altitude change. And the anemometer was also working fine. But this is material for the next episode. Bye.